What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, this is episode number 12. We started today's of stuff on the back of our 2-2 draw against Aston Villa, I absolutely bottled it, turned it up against Steven Gerrard's side. Right now they're chasing Champions League football, we still have an outside shot of European football and a top 7 finish ourselves, but really... That was a big, big missed opportunity there from tuning up for a way to two points. We would head in to the FA Cup quarterfinal. Typical, it's FA Cup quarterfinal weekend in real life as well. Very fitting indeed. But we will take on Manchester City away at the Etihad. And I was not looking forward to this. Now, of course, in the third round of the fourth round, we faced League One sides both away at Hillsborough and in the stadium alike, taking out the Owls and the Black Cats in our pursuit of a place at Wembley this season. Then we knocked out Leicester, the holders in the last 16 at St Mary's, but this was going to be our most difficult test. Manchester City away at the Etihad, and after no defeats in our last three and two wins in three, I had a little bit of confidence, knowing we got a point here earlier on in the season in the Premier League, but I didn't think Lightning was going to strike twice, and right from kickoff, KDB. Is it, is it strange to think that KDB is slightly underrated? When you think of all-time great Premier League players, that KDB isn't one of the first names that come to mind? Does that, does that mean he's underrated? I don't know, but even so, he's been a glorious player to watch over the years under Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. He scored the opening goal of the game, but we would battle back. 11 minutes in, we had our level, and talk about Mr. Consistent. James Ward-Prowse barely misses a minute on the pitch and doesn't miss the target there. We're back on level terms, courtesy of the skipper, and we've got our number eight to fan for it. So 1-1, one, one, we are back on level terms. This is a bit of an interesting fact here, but I'm pretty sure James Wall Prowse actually made his first team debut at this very ground so many years ago. Is that right? Southampton fans, if I've got that right, that's a weird stat and trivia to know, but I think that is right. But even so, he tied the game 1-1, one, one, but to be honest here, despite the captain firing in a leveller, it was all Manchester City, and it was just one of those games, and I, I, I've talked about them before. It's not a case of if, but a case of when. Y you know the AI are going to score again. You know they're going to get a goal. You know they're going to get back in front, and they would right before the break. Maxi Gomez would fire in the goal to restore their lead. I was doing such a good job of keeping them at bay, and I thought if I could just hold on till half-time, get into the dressing room, moral victory, still tied, even if we have been dominated, it's going to give us so much confidence, and then a sucker punch right before the break. Gomez going to finish, puts Man City back in front and I didn't give up in this game though. I kept on pushing looking for another level in our second game and five minutes after the restart oh my goodness this is the goal of the season and it might well end up being the goal of the series in season one oh he's our player of the season and I'm telling you now there's gonna be big bids in the summer I don't know if this guy is going to be a Southampton player in Season 2. Class can wrangle. Because once the big teams come calling, I don't think I'll be able to keep him for realism's sake. Ritsu Doan from 25 yards. Gets the ball around his field to heel to heel flick. And bends one past Edison. And it's a beauty to beat the Brazilian as we're back on level turns for the second time in the game. What a goal. And it is 2-2. I was going crazy this point. I was thinking, please, man. Please, please, please. Second time in the game. I'll battle back from a goal down. I know. I know it's going to be hard to keep Man City at bay, but please let me at least take it to extra time. But it didn't take too long for Man City to restore their lead. 22 minutes to go. Maxi Gomez bags his second in the game. It's 3-2. And for the third time, Man City lead. Now, it was one of those games where I just I had nothing left in the tank. Do you know what I mean? I battled back twice from a goal down to get back on level terms. I felt like I'd done a really decent job on the offensive end, but I just I kind of ran out of steam to be honest. We were a minute and a half to go. Still tied at two. Uh, still down by 3-2. Sorry. This was such an unfortunate goal. Trying to get the ball clear. A couple of deflections right back to Man City and with less than a minute of normal time to go, he bags his hat trick. Gets the match ball, the champagne and makes sure Man City are going to Wembley. Yeah, Maxi Gomez is third of the game in a 4-2 loss away in the Northwest. But I've got to be honest, man. It was one of those games where I was like, Head held high, you know, head held high. I went to the Etihad, massive, massive underdogs. I thought I'd get battered, and I mean, I conceded four goals, so I guess I kind of did. But I, I put up a relatively decent fight, battled back from a goal down twice. But when you look at the stats here and you look at the XG as well, there is no doubt about it. I was beaten by the better team, and I never, ever present the highlights package unfairly. I definitely deserve to lose. Man City had a barrage of chances in the first half. Really, it should have been leading by like four or five goals to one at the break. But it's, it's, it's been a good run, you know, getting to the quarterfinals 
us get into the last eight. I'm gutted we finished one round shy of our first Wembley appearance in the save. It'll be Watford versus Ipswich in the semis, though. How about that plus Spurs versus Man City who knocks out in the other tie? It's been a good run. I mean, the board said in the first season reached the last 16. And in this run, okay, yes, favourable two draws there away against League One sides. But to take out the holders, Leicester City... And only lose to one of the best teams in England, Manchester City. It's, it, it, to me, that's reasonably impressive. I'll take that for season one. Gutted I couldn't reach Wembley, but we were massive underdogs. And we definitely deserve to lose. Man City, the better team on the day. They are through to Wembley. And I'm gutted. I really wanted to get there in season one, but hey, this is a long-term project. There'll be more chances. And for the second game of today's episode, looking to bounce back here on the back of the defeat. Burnley away, Turf Moor, taking on Sean Dyer, just Claret, and what a perfect start as well. Adam Armstrong giving us the lead and making it 1-0. Uh, you know, I, I've sort of rotated the minutes between him and Shea Adams this season. Adams has had a little bit more game time, but Armstrong has started a few games. That's his fourth goal in, in 14 games. I think if you look at the numbers here, Armstrong does have a bit of goal to game ratio than Che Adams he's a rating lower but I'm thinking unless Adams goes on a great run towards the end of the season I might have Armstrong as my starting striker next season and not having the former Blackburn man off the bench because to be fair his goal to game ratio has been reasonably impressive in limited minutes plus some of those goals have come from the bench as well so I'm definitely thinking next season Armstrong or Adams I think at the moment I'm going to prefer Adams so it's 1-0 uh, we're in front of the first time in the game and then Martin uh, sorry but Martin uh, Weghorst Wout Weghorst sorry uh, scored was the leveller for Burnley. <laughs> Signed for one reason and one reason only. This guy is such a physical presence to replace Chris Wood in the Burnley team. I think he's only got the one Premier League goal so far at the time recording this commentary. I might be wrong about that, but this guy has got quite a few more this season. It's his second in two in all competitions. Uh, I'm jumping for joy, but I'm also resigned to the fact that he's probably going to be somewhere else next season. Eighth goal in 28 as he restores our lead right before the break. Ritsu, mate, how much do you want in the summer, bro? Because we only signed you at the start of this season, but I'm already willing to give you a big bumper pay increase and a contract extension. What a star he's been, but I'm pretty sure the big clubs are all going to come knocking in the summer, and once that happens, I will let him go for realism. So he restores our lead. We're back in front in the game, and Burnley really woke up in the second half right now, fighting for survival. I think they're going to be okay, but a win in this game would definitely give them a golden chance of ensuring it will happen before match day first. 38. They were pushing and pressing and looking for a late level in this game. I really needed to win. Any chance of making Europe now means we have to go on a consistent run of form. And with basically the final kick of the game. Oh, you know, those late goals are so common in FIFA. We just conceded a stoppage time goal. But this one hurt a lot more. It was the, the dagger from Gomez in the Man City defeat. But this was the leveller from Maximovic. Final kick of the game. Burnley get back on level terms for the second time in the game, and just like against Aston Villa a couple of games ago. I only got myself to blame, man. I mean, I think Burnley definitely deserved the point, no doubt about it. I had a barrage of chances towards the end of the game, but I've, I've dropped four points in, in two Premier League games from leading positions, and you look at the table here, we're 12 points behind Aston Villa, though we do have the game in hand and can cut it to nine, but the goal difference is far worse uh, as they're in sixth right now. We're nine points behind Chelsea, though I don't feel we've got the game in hand there. So th there is still a chance to cut it to single digits in the race for seventh and also sixth as well, but we could already have it down to single digits had I not dropped those four points from 2 0 up to only get a point away at Villa Park and then leading until the very final kick of the game against Burnley and not getting the win against the side below us in the table. Just sickening results. And those are the sort of results you look back on at the end of the season and think, that's why I didn't hit my objective. Do you know what I mean? You, you'll have this. I have this. At the end of every season, when you fail to hit an objective, whether it was in your objective at the start of the season or something you decided upon midway through, if you fail it by like a point or two, you look back through your results at the end of the season, as you often do, and say, Oh yeah, that draw away at Burnley, that's the one that cost me, so yeah, frustrating. We're still in the race though, I'm not giving up yet, obviously going to go out of the FA Cup of the quarters, but I'm not giving up just yet. See our fixtures here for April, uh, Leeds away down the road, struggling to survive in the relegations are right now, Chelsea and Arsenal, massive games there, and then Watford, Brighton and Crystal Palace. I would say, if we can get three wins out of six and maybe a point as well, we'll keep the pressure on Aston Villa and Chelsea. And if we can beat Chelsea, I think that's the big, great, uh, big game right there, Chelsea. If we can beat Chelsea, I think we've got a golden chance of breaking up the top seven and getting European football. I fancy our chances against Leeds. I fancy our chances against Crystal Palace and Brighton uh, and Watford as well. But that's the big game right there, Chelsea. If we can stop Chelsea winning and get a win, perhaps, 
that will give us a major, major opportunity. Before we get there, we had Leeds away down the road. Right now, bottom of the table. Desperately need wins if they're going to stay up and survive under Jesse Marsh here. And heading into the game, both teams needed a win for different reasons. Our form has been incredibly inconsistent recently. Although, to be fair, it has been a nice unbeaten stretch of no losses in our last five. But away down the road, I didn't need draws. I needed a win. Sorry, uh, no losses in four in the Premier League. I didn't need a draw. I didn't. I needed a win. So heading into the game, had to get the three points in this game. And after Johnston made an early save, I was a little bit worried. It's going to be one of those games where Leeds have an onslaught of attacks and get a few goals. But instead, we scored the opener through Stuart Armstrong, just his second of this season. I think next year... I'm going to phase him into the middle. It'll only take him two weeks to become a central midfielder. Technically, he's really good, but he just doesn't have the pace to play on the wing in the Southampton team in this save. So I think next season, he'll probably be converted to a CM. But he scored our opening goal. Anyway, he made it 1-0. Then Adam almost bagged our, uh, back that second, putting it just off target. Still leading by one. But despite the early chance for Leeds, we have been the better team in this game. And on the stroke of the hour mark here, we'd make it to... It always seems like when we need a goal and we need a result, this man turns up and that's why he's captain. That's why he's the leader of this team. James Ward Prowse bags our second. And it's true, whenever we need a result, it seems like this guy always gets a goal or an assist. What a camera angle this is, by the way. Leeds nil, Saints 2, and it is JWP the skipper with goal number 5 for the season in the Premier League after Dolan's cutback. 2-0, Southampton, a big clean sheet and a big win away at Ellen Road. Leeds right now struggling to survive, but for the Saints... We go marching on, and we still believe there is an outside shot of Europe. You'll see the league table to end today's episode off. It is still quite unlikely, but after an okay unbeaten run in the Premier League, no defeats in our last, again, I think it's four or five games now, there is still an outside shot we can do it, but... With just a few games to go, I think a lot is going to be decided in the very next episode. Chelsea at home, Arsenal at home, Watford at home. A free game home stand. And right now, nine points behind both the Blues and Steven Gerrard's side. We do have the game in hand on Aston Villa. I think if we can beat Chelsea and Arsenal, that'll be incredible. But even just one win of two, preferably against Chelsea, will still give us a golden chance at European football. It is not over yeah, but that will end today's episode of the Realistic Kruma, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't, please drop a like. Much love to you. Have a fantastic day. And don't miss the next episode, the final push for Europe. Can we get there? Can we put the pressure on Chelsea and Villa? Well, I'll see you for it very soon.